Hi, so today I'm going to teach you how to make a floating fry trap, much like the one you see here. Now, what you're going to need is a container. You could choose any container. I got these from an Indian takeaway. Now, you want to choose a container that has enough room to hold your fry. As you can see, between these two, one is deeper than the other, so it can hold more fry. You're also going to want to get some screws. Now you want to choose screws that have a big enough diameter to allow water through, but don't allow the fry to escape. You're going to also want a knife. I'm using a carving knife that I got from a pumpkin carving set. As you can see, the edges are ridged, which allows flexible and easy cutting through plastic. You're also going to need a screwdriver. Here I've got a very basic screwdriver, which I'm going to use to make holes in the plastic later on. You're also going to need some rubber bands. You're going to need about four. This is going to hold the polystyrene in place. You're also going to need aquarium sealant. I got this aquarium sealant from my local pet store for about eight pounds. It's very important that it's aqua safe so it does not damage the fish in any way. You're also going to need some polystyrene. Polystyrene is very buoyant, so it's going to allow our container to float. It's good because you can find it just about anywhere. Now, step one. You're going to choose a container. Here are two containers I got from a takeaway. As you can see, this one is deeper than this one. There's certainly a difference. Now. I think I'm going to choose this one. Right, so now we have our container. We're going to need to make holes. Now here's the tricky part. You want to make holes in the bottom. And the sides, without splitting the plastic. You're also going to need to put polystyrene on the sides, without covering any holes. Now on to making the holes. I found this the most effective way of making the holes. First piercing the plastic with a screw. Like so. Then cutting off the excess plastic. Like that. and then pushing the screw through again. If you can't push the screw through, you can use your screwdriver. It should go in much more easily. Now, once you've done that, take it out. And you can see that it's left a good sized hole. Now I've finished making all the holes in the bottom and the sides. As you can see, there's a crack here. You want to stop making the hole as soon as it starts to split the plastic. Otherwise, I don't think it's such a bad job. Now on to the polystyrene. My polystyrene is going to sit on the plastic like this. So I'm going to make a notch in the bottom of the polystyrene, which is going to allow it to sit on more comfortably. Hey, dude! Why are you taking so long? Hurry up, fool! Yeah, and that's the lesson today. Abuse makes people work faster. So now I'm just going to make sure it fits on, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. Come on! I ain't got all day! That's right! Now that's done. I'm gonna check it fits. And yep. Now there's two options. You can hold it together with elastic bands or silicon it down. Here's the elastic bands. 
this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to cut a notch into the top Now this notch is going to hold the rubber band in place. See? Now this is going to happen. You're going to place the rubber band in the notch, like so, and then round the container. And it should, if we're lucky, hold in place. Now you're going to want to do that with the other side. Now the method I prefer, and I think it's a lot easier, is silicon. You're going to want to spread the silicon in the notch touching the plastic. I'm going to just speed this up again. Now once you've done that, and you spread it out evenly, you're going to want to put it on the plastic container. Push it down just to make sure it's firm, and it'll hold tight. Now, I'm going to put some silicon on the back, just to make sure it's really secure. Now don't judge this, I know what it looks like, but it's not, okay? Right. You're going to spread that along there. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side, but this time I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch it again. And we're done. So, once you've done that, oh, hurry up. Right, you're going to stick it down. Okay, you happy with that? Alright, okay. Oh, he's not happy. He's going to put some more of this stuff on. Make sure it's secure. Uh, um, now, not the prettiest of things, but... You're going to want to wait 24 hours for the silicon to dry. Now that's done, we can test it out. So, this is the final product. I'm just going to place it in the tank here. This is my Bricardian Shell Dwellers tank that I set up yesterday. And I've got a video on that if you want to check it out. It takes a wee while to fill up with water. Once that's done, you can see it floats. It's fairly deep, and deep enough. And it works pretty well. Now I'm going to show you how deep it is compared to a two pence piece, just so you get a perspective. Okay, this is what you can buy in the shops. As you can see, mine's fairly similar and a lot cheaper, as this can cost you about eight pounds. Unfortunately, the price to pay is it's not quite as deep. Unless, of course, you can get a big enough container. Okay, I hope this helped. And as I just finished making this video, I noticed that Mark, Bolly12345, has already made a video like this. But, he's a good guy. He's got, a, he's got some good videos. Definitely check out his channel. I'll post a link in the description. Cheers, guys.